all systems are a go. It's gone too far in the big four hearts. We're stepping in the ring. We're gonna take them down. Dicetyl morphine, better known as heroin, is a white crystalline narcotic derived from morphine. A naturally occurring substance extracted from the opium poppy, heroin is two to three times more potent than morphine. It may be smoked or snorted, but heroin is most commonly injected. In its purest form, heroin is a bitter white powder, but it is often sold as a brownish or grayish powder or as a black sticky substance known as black tar. Almost all the heroin in the world comes from four major geographical regions. Southeast Asia, Southwest Asia, Mexico, and South America. Massive quantities of heroin enter the country through the Port Newark Elizabeth Marine Terminal. As a result of this proximity, the purity levels of heroin in New Jersey are incredibly high. The average purity level of the heroin sold in the state ranges from 40 to 58%. To put this in perspective, the national average of heroin purity is a little above 31%. Higher purity can mean increased risk of overdose from smaller doses. Drug users in the United States spend roughly $100 billion annually on cocaine, heroin, marijuana, and methamphetamines. That's more than the 2014 revenues of Bank of America, IBM, Boeing, Citigroup, Amazon, Microsoft, Home Depot, and Target. It is estimated that in 2010, nearly $27 billion of this $100 billion was spent on heroin alone. That is a 22% increase since 2006. In 2013, there were 43,982 drug overdose deaths compared to 35,369 motor vehicle deaths and 16,121 homicides. Of those overdose deaths, 8,257 were a result of heroin and 16,235 were from opioid analgesics. The majority of heroin addicts are adolescents or young adult men and women. These addicts are mostly Caucasian and middle class, but individuals of every age, class, and background are struggling with the epidemic. Morning, 
Kayla. Good luck on your math test today. I love you. Thanks, Mom. Love you okay. too. Recent studies have shown that people who abuse opioid pain medications are 19 times more likely to start using heroin. And 8 out of 10 people who start using heroin progressed from painkillers. This progression can be shockingly quick, given that heroin is usually much cheaper than prescription drugs. Opiate pain medications cost the uninsured about $1 per milligram, so a 60 milligram pill will cost $60 you can obtain the equivalent amount of heroin for about one-tenth the price. You need to get that not-my-kid mentality out of your head. Even just a couple weeks of heroin use can mean the complete deterioration of one's previous life. That is, if they don't overdose before then. Parents must be alert for the warning signs. They are there. You just need to know what to look for before it's too late. so inexpensive that you find out here, right in the suburbs and the urban areas across Monmouth County. It's cheap, it's incredibly pure, and it creates a chemical dependency more than any other substance on the face of the earth. One of the biggest cons contributors to the heroin epidemic in Monmouth County and throughout the United States is the uh, abuse of prescription drug medicines. We see someone who is legally prescribed opiates through a prescription by a doctor obtained through a pharmacy. Those, those prescription pills run out, but the pain still exists, and people naturally and chemically want to be pain-free. Opiate pills, any kind of opiates, are very highly addictive, and whether it's prescription medicines or illicit drugs like heroin or others, uh, they can become addicted very, very quickly. Once they're hooked on those pain pills, they go out into the streets seeking heroin, a fix that's something that'll take away that pain. We're concerned at high school and college age students getting introduced to these drugs, and, uh, and, and once they get introduced to them and start using them, especially the heroin, it's, it's usually an enslavement for the rest of their life to this drug. We have the distinction of being lodged between the greatest heroin market in the world, and that is between the New York metropolitan area and the Washington, D.C. area. And Monmouth County is right there, just an hour or two drive. We have the unfortunate distinction of having a 58%, on average, a 58% uh, purity on the street level. That's double the national average, and some of that testing, we've had bags test as high as 95% or in the 90s uh, percent uh, of pure heroin. There's such a market here that it's easy to buy. It's seven to $10 a bag, and a typical addict will go through seven to 10 bags a day. It's a heck of a lot cheaper than illegal prescription pills. Anytime someone picks up a bag of these high purity heroin, this high purity heroin, uh, and snorts it or injects it, they're playing Russian roulette with their lives. Monmouth County has the unfortunate distinction of averaging roughly 70 deaths a year because of heroin or opiates abuse. And we've, we've had some victories. We, we recently have been out, on, out in front on the tip of the spear about arming all of our first responding police officers with Narcan and Naloxone. Once a heroin addict overdoses, they're sprayed into their nose and they, come, they can immediately reverse the effects of the heroin, the slow breathing, the heart rate going down. We've deployed in the last year naloxone over 220 times, which basically reverses the effects of heroin. Uh, out of that, 200, approximately 220 times, approximately we saved 200 lives. It's not a treatment, it's not a cure. It's just a temporary uh, step to bring a person back to life. Saving the life goes beyond just the administration of naloxone. It goes to breaking that cycle of addiction. And the most important thing we need is for that person, that addict, or his or her family members, to want to break that cycle. This is not an addiction that all of a sudden, overnight, it's cured. It's a long, long road to recovery. But the first step has to be taken with the parents, and the parents have to be very supportive. If parents are talking to their children, and they still have their attention and their ear, it makes a difference. 
we got to get the parents past that belief that it couldn't happen to my child. Parents should know their children, obviously, and if your, your child's your behavior is, is behavior has changed, um, they, they don't seem to have uh, caring uh, like, like you knew your child before. If they're sleeping a lot, if there's things missing around the house. If they start changing their friends, and they're all of a sudden hanging around with people that are new, uh, and that really you, you, can, you have that sixth sense as a parent that they're, that they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. Don't just think that it couldn't happen to your child. It doesn't mean that these signs necessarily mean that you have an addict or somebody who's going down the path of addiction, but just pay attention. It's incumbent upon all of us as a community to come together and embrace education and awareness to help try and end this problem and get people into treatment. And most importantly, is make sure that they have the education so when in the future, the person doesn't pick up and use that first bag of heroin. Pass the word. Keep, be educated. Talk to their friends, families, and neighbors about it. Talk to an addiction and treatment specialist. There's a number of them that operate across New Jersey, many of which are partners with the prosecutor's office. Um, they can talk to you about what steps to take in order to cut that off at the pass before it becomes that epidemic as it has for so many. Because once they pick up and use that first bag of heroin or, or abuse opiate pills, unfortunately statistics are not with them that they're going to go on and lead a productive life, if not eventually die from the addiction. Down from the top